Are your robotics projects hitting a brick wall? Do you need to add something additional to them? Maybe it's object detection, scene classification, intelligent mapping, or even a way for your robot to interact and react to unpredicted scenarios. Then this video is for you. Whether you are an AI developer, IoT embedded developer, or a robotics app developer, you'll learn how to integrate AI into your robotics applications. I'm Rajan Misri, and this is Introduction to AI in Robotics. In this video, we'll be talking about how you can add AI to your robotics use cases. And today, we have Kishore with us, who is part of the product management team who is focused on robotics use cases. Hi, Kishore. Hi, Rajan. Great to be here. Thanks, Kishore. So to kick us off, Kishore, uh, why don't you uh, start us off with some trending use cases around robotics that you have seen? So robotics is vast. It is, we see robots in almost every walk of life, from homes to enterprise use cases to industrial. I mean, think about it, right? You have vacuum cleaners that run around your house. You have robots that are cooking your burgers because of labor shortages. There are robots that are helping fulfill deliveries, same day deliveries and enterprise uh, in warehouse settings. There are robots manufacturing your cars. So they're pretty much everywhere today. Yeah, talking about robots uh, cleaning houses, right? These are autonomous robots. I would imagine AI plays a big role in enabling those use cases. Uh, what problems can, can they solve by including AI in, in the robotics use cases? Sure. So robots are uh, primarily responsible for doing four things, right? Sensing, thinking, acting, and communicating. So traditionally, um, the thinking part has been less, uh, and they've been doing primarily the other three. What is changing now is with the advancements of AI, the thinking is being redefined. And a lot more autonomy, uh, robots are, doing, have, are becoming more autonomous because of the advances in AI. Can you give me some examples on that? Sure. Let's take a simple example like a home vacuum cleaner. The robot goes around figuring out the layout of your home, it makes a map, then it starts vacuuming your house. But we all know that it's a dynamic situation, right? The home furniture moves around, things move around, and the robot needs to constantly adapt. It needs to learn to the new situations and yet accomplish its task of vacuuming every, aspect, every nook and corner of the house. So what is happening is that the robot is constantly learning on a day-to-day -day basis. The more data it ingests, the more uh, its models are being refined, and in return, that comes back and makes the robot more intelligent and adapt to various kinds of situations. And that's a simple home vacuum situation. Now you think of it like a much more complex thing like a delivery robot that's bringing pizza for you. It's even more complex situation because it's going on the streets, sidewalks, people are walking, there can be any number of obstacles. These robots are constantly learning, 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 and adapting to ensure that they can do their tasks autonomously. So these are just a couple of good examples. Yeah, thanks. So you talked about a lot of challenges that the robot themselves has, has to tackle in the use cases. What about the developers? As developers are, are looking to implement these use cases, what are some of the challenges that the developers are facing to, to enable these uh, robotics with AI? So developers, first step, they need to develop the models, the AI models that they will use. But that's only half the challenge. They now need to deploy this on the hardware and not all hardware is same. So they need to adapt their models for different kinds of hardware. Obviously, various networks and frameworks abstract and make it easier, but to fully leverage the capabilities of SOC, they need to port it to that particular SOC, they needed to optimize it, uh, leveraging the various hardware capabilities of that SOC. And, and in robotics, an important thing is that there are lots of sensors, right? And there's a fusion of the data coming from different kinds of sensors. And developers need to consider that sensor fusion aspect as they develop their models and optimize their models. Okay. You're talking about sensor fusion and sensors and hardware ecosystem, right? I think we have seen 
uh, developers do look for a lot of those things as they are selecting their, their uh, robotics development kits, right? Hardware ecosystems, what type of sensors are available, what type of uh, maybe SOMs are available that will help them commercialize. But focusing just on AI, right? Uh, when they're selecting their, their hardware development kits or, or, or platforms to build their robotics use cases, specifically to AI, what are some of the things they should consider while picking and running with a, uh, with a platform? Yeah. So when it comes to developers and AI, there are quite a few options. But I would highly encourage them to first select that something uh, tailored for robotics, especially if you're a robotics developer. Because a prop platform that's tailored for robotics comes with all the bells and whistles that is required, that are commonly used in a robot. And it's not they don't have to then do the additional work of finding everything and integrating them and all that stuff. Um, and then when it comes to the SOC itself, um, different compute blocks, are uh, like especially Qualcomm, for example, relies on heterogeneous compute. It's like different compute blocks, CPUs, GPUs, DSPs, AI processing unit, ISPs, CVP, computer vision processing unit. This is like almost like a Swiss Army knife. Each compute block is there for a certain task and executing the task optimally. So such a powerful compute uh, platform is beneficial to developers because they can then run, for example, the real-time tasks on a CPU. They can do their image processing on a GPU, all the AI on the neural processing unit. They can offload their computer vision processing from the, from the AI to a hardware accelerator that's dedicated for that, etc. cetera. Uh, that is, those are some considerations that developers will have to take into account. Okay. Yeah, so it, it's very interesting because as a developer, uh, a developer might quickly get overwhelmed with all of these, these different subsystems, right? Uh, building an application that leverages CPU, GPU, DSP, ISPs, all of these camera pipelines, computer visions. Uh, do developers really need to be expert in all of these subsystems or are there tools available to developers? How, how are we enabling these developers to, to focus on building their end applications and not have to worry about all of these subsystems that are enabling all of these excellent use cases? Excellent question. So if you see over the last few years, why AI has become so pervasive is that there have been a lot of uh, platforms and tools and SDKs in the open source community that has uh, you know, democratized AI development. And that same goodness is what we are bringing as on Qualcomm platforms. We are providing the developers with all the flexibility they need, different kinds of OSs like Linux, Ubuntu, Android, the uh, goodness of a ROS, ROS2, and then we support all these SDKs from, um, uh, from the open source community or we have enhanced them. So when it comes to robotic developers, it becomes so much easier because we are abstracting all that and make, and they don't have to worry about CPU, GPU or whatnot, but we also provide them flexibility to override uh, and you know choose where if they want to do certain tasks in a certain compute block. But for the most part, they can just use common frameworks and they're off running with their applications. So how do developers get started? So excellent question again. Um, so Qualcomm, we've been making a lot of efforts to ensure that developers have access to our powerful technology and use it. And towards that, we have developed uh, hardware development kits. So we have the Qualcomm Robotics RV5 development platform, which is on display here. We also have uh, Qualcomm Robotics RV1 and RV2 development platforms, which addresses different tiers. So with these platforms, we are addressing all tiers of robotics. Developers can use this to quickly run their applications, prototype, and whatnot. Um, they come with lots of sensors pre-integrated from IMUs and uh, thermal sensors and all this, all robotics specific sensors to cameras and multi-camera in fact, um, including tracking camera, GMSL cameras and such. Uh, and then uh, we have leaned forward and took that farther by introducing uh, form factor specific reference designs. For example, I have the drone reference design. We similarly have uh, Qualcomm's um, AMR specific reference design. So what is happening here is that we have integrated 
all the motor control, uh, all the stuff that a drone or AMR requires. So pretty much a developer can uh, procure one of these form factor stuff and then they can develop their vertical specific applications. So it's so much more easier where they can focus on what they're good at and leave out the rest. Awesome, thank you Kishore. Thanks Rajan, it's been a pleasure. Yeah. Now that we've given you an overview of AI in robotics, we'll deep dive into each one of these topics. We'll take a dev kit, unbox it, and look at the operating system that's available on the development kit. We'll also look at some middleware like ROS and how those middlewares can enable you quickly deploy your robotics applications. We'll take a look at how sensor data can be, can be used in these applications and also how we can use frameworks to quickly create camera pipelines and apply AI uh, to those uh, camera sensors. So we'll look at object detection, we'll also look at a couple of end-to-end -end use cases on, on these development kits. So stay tuned.